So if you're watching this video, it means that you're struggling to connect your Next.js application with your WebSocket connection. And my advice is if you're struggling to make this happen, just take the time and watch this video because the issues that I came across might be one of the issues that you are coming across. And at the end, I'm going to show you how eventually I was able to make everything work together. That way, everything makes sense. So the first thing that you need to know is that WebSocket connections with Next.js is almost like oil and water. And the reason I say this is because the way that WebSockets are used for constant communication between multiple people or two clients, like when you're having a chat application and you want to communicate with another person, this needs constant communication which is an issue with Next.js when you're using it because of its routing system. What I'm trying to say is, when you're using Next.js, the way that it works is every time you click a button to go to a route, to a page, it does that. And the moment it reaches that place that you're trying to go, it ends the connection. So every time you click, let's say you go to an About page and you click, it takes you there, it ends. That is a problem when it comes to WebSocket connection because you need constant communication between the server, the client, and things of that nature. So before we keep going, I just want to tell you that I'm not using TypeScript. So if you're looking for a solution using TypeScript, my bad, this is not the video. I'm using JSX. The issue that I was having with this application that I'm building, which is using Next.js, Tailwind, MongoDB, and Socket.io, and now Express.js, after I built the chat application, it was time for me to connect and implement Socket.io. And I'm saying Socket.io on purpose because if you are a new developer, most likely you're using AI to guide yourself to build new things, which is cool. But here's the thing. If you're using WebSockets, literally the word with these AIs, they will literally guide you to install a package, which is called WS. You don't have to use it. The one that you need is Socket.io for the server in Socket.io client for the client. And again, you see TypeScript, don't worry. So let's talk about the issues that I was coming across. When I first started implementing Socket.io within my chat application, the first thing that I did was just like, if you code in with Next.js, you put in everything in the app router, right? Because you're trying to use the APIs, you're trying to use the, the routing system. And when I was using my server code for WebSockets, which is this, I kept noticing an issue. And it was that, you see the console log here? It says disconnected and then it says socket connected successfully. So what was happening was as soon as I signed into the application, it will disconnect me immediately. And that's when we go back to what we were talking previously. It was disconnecting me because I was using the API routes from Next.js. And the moment I reached this route, it was disconnecting me immediately. So there was no longer a connection. And what I noticed was, okay, let me start looking for different examples to see how I can fix this. So I started looking for different tools. So I came across this article and it's straight to the point, but the problem that I kept encountering with a lot of the examples is that it's a very bare bone application. This is not connecting to a database that doesn't have models. So I needed something that was going to include a database connection and using models from MongoDB. And I kept coming across other things. But for instance, if you're trying to use TypeScript, I recommend this tutorial. This person goes in depth to connecting it. But sadly for me, it was not useful because I'm not using TypeScript. And then I came across this video. And what this person did got my attention because as you can see, he has a client side and a server side. And I was like, hmm. So maybe what I need to do is take out my WebSocket code and put it outside. And then it goes back to this article. He says, create a WebSocket server that will handle real-time communication, blah, blah, blah. Create a new folder named server in the project root directory and create a server JS. All you need to know is I took out all my code that was within the API folder and the app folder and I took it outside in the roots of the project because if I kept the code here it was going to keep giving me the issue of logging me out from the socket connection which is not what we want. I followed this explanation plus this video and that's what I did but then I thought that okay this should fix the problem because that's kind of makes sense right and nope that did not fix the problem the issue was that 
now that I'm outside the routing system of Next.js, the moment I take it out from the app folder, it destroys everything. So that's when I realized, okay, these people are using Express.js. So this should be very easy to implement. And that's when I came across another problem. So the moment that I started using the Express server, I was using imports. If you look at my application, you'll see that I'm using common modules, but there's also a combination of ES modules. And this was a problem because my entire application was being built completely on ES modules. So I came across a new issue. Since I was using ES modules, the problem was I kept getting this error. Every time that I was trying to run the application, I would get this. To load ES module, set type module in the package.json or use the MJS extension. That sounded very good in theory, but all it was telling me to do is, oh, go to the package.json. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go here and you're going to go write type equals module. And then somehow this is going to fix the problem. And when I did it, that created another issue because I'm using next auth for my authentication. So the problem was that it was going to intervene and cause issues with all of my .js files. Now I'm at JSX, which is my front end. So I kept trying to implement this. And I kept struggling because I was going to have to like change the different imports. And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm trying to use ES modules. I don't want to use common modules because this is going to affect the application. So what I did was like a good boy. I went to the documentation and I go here to socket.io and next.js. And the first thing I see here, the server.js file becomes the entry point of your application. So what this was telling me to do was to, okay, so change the dev script and the star script for this and this. And I was like, okay, this should fix the issue, right? I'm following the documentation. It has to work. Guess what? It didn't. It broke the application. I, I spent four days stuck because I couldn't figure, man, what is going on? So the socket.io documentation is not helping me. And I kept trying this and it was just a complete waste of time. And what can possibly help me? Because I kept getting this error. So the import. And I was like, huh, I think what I'm going to have to do is try to implement like a way of common modules and ES modules, a combination of both. And eventually that's what I ended up doing. So what I did was, okay, let me go to my packet.json and let me put everything normal. And what I did, I added an extra script, which is to when I do the NPN run server, it runs the server. And then the NPN run dev, it runs dev. So the 3000 port and the 3001 server port. When I did that, and I'm going to explain to you this. This is very cool, but this is not important right now. So the way that I was able to finally connect my socket.io and express was doing the following. I So what I did here, I had to refactor the entire uh, import system. Because again, a lot of these examples like this one, and this one, they're not connecting to a database. So it just didn't fit what I was trying to do. The answer for my problem was, was to change the import statements from ES module syntax to common JS require statements and require is very specific what I'm trying to say here. So I'm not changing all the modules from ES to common. I'm not doing that. I only changed the modules that overlap with each other, meaning I'm going to change that database uh, imports, as you can see here. So instead of import connect to DB, I turn it into a common. I also need the modules for the user because that's how you log in. So and I change the import from ES to common, and then I just follow suit. So everything that connected with the database, I changed it from ES to common. So that's how I was able to fix the, the situation and also some imports for the mongoose. But here's the funny thing. It wasn't like a crazy change, but as you can see here, if all I changed was export default user to module that exports equals user. Again, what you're going to do is take all the web socket code from your API routes. You don't need them there. It's going to bring you problems. You're going to take that outside and you're going to create a server folder and within you're going to have a server file which is going to have your express. So you're going to have to use express JS to make this work. So that's what I did to make sure that everything uh, worked properly. If you want to see the implementation of the code, there's no problem.
I'm gonna put it on the description so you can have it now I said I was gonna leave something for last and it was this package which is here I'm using a package called concurrently the reason I'm using concurrently is that remember that I said that I have these two different scripts so uh, npm run dev npm run server so what it does is run multiple scripts at the same time with only one command so as you can see here instead of me having to run dev or server I just put that when I run npm run start it will run the npm run dev and the npm run server so it does it for you at the same time and then it actually looks quite nicely so when you run it this is how it looks it runs the the server as you can see here and then it runs the local port for the server and then boom it runs the local port for your front end so it does that for you yeah that's really all I got so thank you for watching